during subsequent uh, discussions on the same matter, Yankuba Ture did report back that there was nothing that, uh, that his guards had seen. Uh, my question really yes. relates to when did this discussion between Yankuba and Yaya Jame take place? When was Yankuba instructed to deploy his guards? Like I said, Council, I believe it took place at State House when Yaya Jame and Yankuba Ture were there prior to Jame's departure. Essentially on the same date, on the same day that Jame departed. I believe so, yes. Yes. Th thank you very much. Uh, the, the issue here, Mr. Singate, is would that issue be a matter for the President? So all security matters are matters for the President. But uh, in the security arrangements of this country, there are obviously institutions whose responsibility it would be to deal with this particular matter. Isn't that the case? Yes, sir. We do have institutions. And those institutions were not involved? No, sir. I don't believe so. And on this particular oh, occasion... Oh, sorry, not, not exactly on, uh, on that day uh, or prior. Yes, my, my yes. questions relate to that particular day. Mm -hmm. And on that particular day, all the witnesses who testified before the commission said the information they were given was a lie. Well, sir, that cannot be verified, and that is wrong. Just because they did not see vessels at the time that they went to the beach on patrol doesn't mean that vessels did not come ashore that night. Uh, the, the witnesses testified that from everything that they saw, they believe that they've been misled to go on patrol simply because Yankuba Ture did not want them to be present in his home when this heinous crime was being committed. Well, sir, really, if that is their belief, that is up to them. But first of all, I don't even believe that this heinous crime was committed in Yankuba's house. Uh, we will come to that. Yes, sir, we will. Uh, in fact, one of our witnesses, Jangom, said he went on patrol. He was tired going on this wild goose chase. He returned to Yankuba's house. That is when he saw you there and you sent him back away. You sent him to go on patrol again. What do you say to that? Sir, that is extremely funny. First of all, the same Jangom who saw me smoking. And secondly, which I don't smoke. And secondly, if Yankuba has sent his guards, they will come and report back to him, not to me. Uh, he never said he came to report to you. He said he returned to the house. For when he got there, you sent him away. Uh, sir, that is completely wrong. It is only Yankuba that could have sent him away. Mr. Singate, you are the acting president. You are the acting commander-in-chief. You are the minister of defense. But the This guy were was not a lonely lance corporal. Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay, this guy ahead. was a lonely lance corporal in the army. Who is he to say that he would not heed to your order to go back on patrol? Sir, that order was never given. And secondly, I would not have given him the order in the absence of Yankuba Ture. In fact, if I was there and Yankuba Ture was there, I would have referred them to Yankuba. They would have gone directly to Yankuba to Mr. report, not Mr. to me. Singate, you want us to believe that? Of course. Sir, because you are not in the military, you have never served, you would not understand our regimentation as we do. Just I would take serious exception to that, Mr. Singhati. No, you, you, you uh, cannot. I built my career on prosecuting on militaries. It I doesn't... built my career on dealing with command responsibility. So I understand how militaries work. I understand what regimentation is, but let us not go there. Let us just deal with the issues and answer the questions. 
it, it, if the president of this country would go so low as to deal with, with guards would serve at whose house? You as the chairman, you as the acting president, could not tell one of those guards to go back on patrol. So just because the president and Yankuba had a discussion on this doesn't mean that I would have done the same. Uh, no, the, you, you're missing the point. You suggesting, point? You're suggesting that you would not have been the one to, 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 to give this guy the order yes. to, to, to leave. Well, he said it was you. So now because he said it, it is the Bible truth. The person who saw me smoking, and I don't smoke, tells the commission that I tell him to go back and you believe that. Mr. Singate, non-smokers do smoke in, in difficult times, in circumstances that are completely different. And you would agree with me that the execution, the assassination of the finance minister of a country is not just any other occasion. Well, sir, my answer to that is, where is my packet of cigarettes? Because this is also a difficult time trying to answer to an allegation that I have not committed. So I definitely would need a smoke if I would. You equating the two? <laughs> of course, sir. Definitely. That would be preposterous, wouldn't sir, it? Sir, you are not in my shoes. I understand. You I would, don't. I would not want to be. But let us move on, uh, Mr. Singate. We have your security guards putting you in Yankuba's house, two of your security guards. We have two of Yankuba, two of security guards putting you in that house. And we have another person from the military barracks also putting you in the house. You still deny this. Sir, my two guards that I had kicked out of my house. Another guard of belonging to Yankuba who claimed he saw me smoking. And another one who said that I was there, he came back, he never came into the house, and he remember his testimony. He said that he saw a fleet of vehicles outside. Where were the people? Why wasn't the house full? Uh, we, we will come to Of all course that. we will, we sir. Will come yes, to I, I, I'm just in putting my point across. Uh, it is well noted, Mr. Singh. It you. is on the record. Yes, now sir. let's listen to Alaji Kani, what he had to say about what happened in Yankuba's, in Yankuba's house. Please proceed, please. Audio, please. Volume. Audio, please. Myself, Mr. Jada, Tumultama, and Prime Gomez. Where did you pick Tumbul Tamba from? BJ Tumbul Tumbul Tumbul. And Tumbul, does he have another nickname? No, that's his name, Tumbul Tamba. Does he have a nickname? Another name by which he is known? No. Does the name Mali or Mungu mean anything to you? That's not Tumbul Tamba. No, Tumbul, that is not Tumbul Tamba. Tumbul, does he have a nickname? As far as you know. No, I don't know. So the four of you yes, please. went to Cape Point. Cape Point. Which house did you go to in Cape Point? Captain Edward Smithers, sir. And uh, was it a private house? It's a private house. No, it, it's like, you know, that is his, he's allocated with that Please, we call the, I don't know, uh, former, you know, former VP's resident or, yes, that's why it's So you're referring to the vice president's residence located at Cape Point? Yes, please. And what happened when you got there? There, you know, uh, uh, everyone, we are briefed by everyone that, okay, don't worry, we are here. We are going to get rid of one fucking cunt. Could you repeat what you just said so we get exactly what you said? He said to us that, okay, we are going to get rid of that fucking cunt. One fucking cunt. We are going to get rid of one fucking cunt. Contest. At this stage, 
Did he tell you who was he, who he was referring to? No, sir. But when he said that, you knew you were going to go on an operation, correct? Yes, sir. But what kind of operation we don't know because we, at that time, we are not with uh, rifle AK-47, you mean AK-47. But what did you understand him to mean when he said, we are going to get rid of one fucking cunt? What did you understand him to mean? It's like, at that time, definitely, all of us were wondering, who is this man and what kind of operation we are going do you understand what he meant by getting rid of somebody? Did you understand that? No, sir. Did you ask him questions? No, sir. When this briefing was being made, who was present? Four of us. And his brother, Peter Senati. And of course, Edward himself. Edward himself. Sister Hugh. Yes. And uh, d did Peter Sinata say anything? No, sir. And what happened after Edward briefed you and said we are going to get rid of one fucking cunt? What happened after that? Uh, he, he, you know, he got up and then he drove his car. Then followed by us and Peter also followed with his car. So there were three vehicles? Yes. Edward in one vehicle? Yes. Uh, the four of you in another vehicle? Yes. And then Peter in a third vehicle? Yes. Did they tell you at this stage where you were, where they were taking you? Before we left in his uh, residence, Peter is the one who said to us that, uh, it's said to make a drive to Yankuba's place, Yankuba's residence. Which Yankuba are you referring to? Captain Yankuba today. At this stage, were you told what you were going to do at Captain Yankuba today's residence? No, sir, we are not told. Did you know exactly where you were going? We are going to, I know that we are going to Yankuba's residence. Well, of what? I don't know at the moment. Did you know exactly where that residence was located at this time? While you were in the vehicle going, mm -hmm. did you know where Yankuba's residence was? It's like, it's, it's around Senegambia and well, definitely right now I can't identify the place. Did you ever go to Yankuba's place before this event? Not at all. Did you ever go to Yankuba's place after this event? Not at all. At what time of the day did you get there on this occasion? Yeah. This was around, you know, uh, after 7 to 8. Did you, apart from knowing the general direction, but it, it was around Senegambia area. Uh, did you did you know exactly where the pla where the place is located? Tell us what you know, what you can remember. So I'm definitely at, at this point in time right now. No, it's been a while. I can't exactly you know. Remember the place now. But before you left, mm -hmm. you did not know where Yankuba's tourist house was located. Yes, sir, because I've never visited there. Exactly. This was the, this was my first time to visit to visit it. On the way while going, were you told who this fucking cunt was? Quote unquote. Upon arrival, not only upon arrival at the residence, we are told by Edward that, okay, wait for us here. We are going to the airport. Then I can remember 
if I can fully remember, there was an activity at the airport. Either the chairman was leaving the Yard Jamia to somewhere else, or he is coming. You see? So they are going to see him off or receive him, something like that. The activity was at the airport. So from the airport, they will come. Did they tell you what to do at Yankova's house? When we arrived there, the briefing was, uh, we are coming with uh, Kani, we are coming with one, we are coming with one minister. So you don't, you don't know you. Like, you will be at the gate, it is open our arrival, you will receive us. You salute, you salute us and welcome us. And come with him. inside the house. At this stage, when you arrived there, where were the guards at Yankuba's house? To my surprise, we met no guard there and no family members, like his wife and family, wife and whatsoever. No wife, no guards, no nothing. So on that, his family uh, who told us that uh, but I'm here for guards. I said, ah, no. we are here, and they said they are coming with one minister. <coughs> Whether they are coming to have gathering, meeting, or we don't know. So, and he said to me, he said me, I should, I will receive him at the gate. So you people will be somewhere, somewhere around inside the house. Yes, it's like that. And uh, during that briefing, who was present? Yes. 
Yes, sir. Not only did Kanye put you in the scene, he described a story that looks consistent with the stories of the other witnesses. But let's take it step by step. Nobody else was in that house. No family, no guards. That is consistent with what the other witnesses said, correct? So before we uh, go down that line, can you allow me to react to this statement? I, I was going to do that, but uh, may I ask my questions first? Of course, yes, sir. Uh, what can you describe? accords with this testimony of other witnesses that nobody is in the house, nobody was in the house. Well, sir, I believe and Samendi said that he was not aware whether the maids were in the house. You had Django who said that the family was taken away the maids were not sleeping maids. They were not in the house. Well, sir, about the evidence that is already before the commission, that is up to the commission to decide. It's, I don't know what you're trying to achieve by asking me whether evidence before the commission is already consistent. The only thing that I can do is tell you my side of the story. I appreciate that. I know what I want to achieve. Could you answer my question? Whether the description by Kani and Jangom and Ensa Mendi and uh, Lamindur uh, are consistent, that people were not in the house? Yes, Jangom said that they had left. Kanye said that they had not found anyone there. But there are some comments that I need to make with regards to these points. 
Uh, I will give you the okay. chance. Okay. So we'll as long as you give me the uh, because okay. I am on the hot seat here and I need to respond. And I would be very fair to you. Okay. You would have the chance to respond. Just answer my question. This story by Kanye is consistent with the evidence of other witnesses, correct? That they found nobody in the house. Yes. Yeah, it appears, yes. That's true. Uh, would you think that Kanye conspired with these witnesses to tell a story? Sir, I have no idea what Kanye has been up to these years. How can I tell whether he conspired or not? I said that, that is not um, possible for me to answer. Uh, Kanye's story yes. is that the body was removed and taken away by you, Yanku Bature, and your brother Peter. Mm -hmm. That too is consistent with the fact that the remains of Usman Korosise was found in some remote place away from Yankuba's house, isn't it? That is not consistent with that, sir. There are two different things. You have somebody claiming that a body was removed, and then you have somebody, well, and then you have the actual body found. What is the nexus? The nexus is, if it was not removed from the house, as suggested by the witness, it would not have been found in the forest. But I was not there at the house. And we, we will come to that, if you allow me. Okay, please proceed. Okay. So, first of all, the major flaw in the investigation is that you did not venture to find out what the relationship between myself and this uh, Alaji Kanye is. You see, prior to 1994, the only business I ever had with Kanye was good morning, sir, good afternoon, sir, good morning, good afternoon. We greet and we pass. November 11th, Kanye was suspected of being part of the coup plotters. And he turned on his own people. Now, for somebody who you barely know, and then you suspect of him plotting to kill you because these November 11th coup plotters plotted to kill us and our families. How can you trust such a person to go and collect him and commit a capital offense unless I am not in my right frame of mind. Number two, he claimed to have come to my house with some other soldiers. Nobody put him, uh, placed him at my house except himself. Before you come to my house, there is a procedure. He was not brought in by anybody. I did not see Kanye on that day. Number three, if you are going to go and commit an offense with somebody, somebody in their right frame of mind, unless somehow I was def so deficient of uh, my mental faculties that I did not know what was happening, you would ordinarily tell the person that you are going to go and commit a crime. Even a butut. If you are going to go and steal with somebody, you tell them, ah, boy, mangedem sachili. If he tells you, ah, no bokuma, then your mission is cancelled. How can you risk going all the way to the place, attempt to commit a crime, or start committing a crime? What if the person says, I'm not part of it? Now, sir, I might not be very intelligent, but I don't think that I am so unintelligent as to allow myself to have committed <clears throat> excuse me, such fundamental and grave errors. On top of that, but, but, sir, but, please, but, allow me, please. Look, I, I, I am on the hot seat. Okay. On top of that, Kanye had said that 
we went there between seven to eight. I must have left between eight and nine. Jankum clearly told this commission that he and the family left somewhere between eight to ten. Now, how is it possible? And Lamin Fati also told this commission that the president was to be expected at the airport at nine, and we left for the airport around eight. How is it physically possible for me to have driven Kanye and Co to a place and they not see any family there when they have been placed there at that time? And I was also placed somewhere else at the same time. So what I can tell you is that I don't know what Kanye's issue is, and I would not want to delve into it, but it is fundamentally flawed and wrong. All of these witnesses that have placed me at the scene never saw Kanye, never saw Peter, never saw Yankuba, apart from Enza at the end. Well, I mean, he said he saw Yankuba in his shorts. Never saw anybody else that he mentioned. Never saw Koro at the scene. So magically, a murder took place, and only one person is cited, despite the fact that everyone that Kanye uh, had claimed were supposed to have been there, but were not cited. So really, I don't know how much or how much more defective a testimony can get before it is thrown out. So, sir, what Kanye is mentioning did not and could not have happened. I would not commit an offense with somebody I barely know. I would not take somebody to go and commit a crime without informing them. And remember, we already have testimony, even July 22nd, which is treason. I made sure that I informed my troops. I made sure that they were well informed. But he claimed that he never even knew what was going to happen. So really, sir, I, I know people who have listened to this emotionally have already been carried away. I can only tell you that it is not plausible. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Sinatra. Uh, can you tell the commission that you told them that they're going to get rid of a fucking cunt, correct? Yes, sir, he did. And that clearly indicated what they were going to do, doesn't it? Sir, with regards to... No, no, it does not clearly, sir. It doesn't it indicate what was the purpose of your mission? No, sir, it does not. We're going to get rid of... of Getting rid of a person you referred to as a fucking cunt, doesn't that describe what the mission was going to be? Sir, that is not clear enough uh, to Getting describe. rid of, doesn't it mean to kill somebody? It, it could have meant anything. Oh, what, yes. el what else could it have mean? It could have meant that there was somebody squatting somewhere and we are going to get rid of him. It could have meant that someone uh, was under somebody's employment and we are going to move him. You're still using the same words. The same word you're using. What does getting rid of mean? Getting, getting rid, rid of. of a person, what does it mean in <laughs> English? Not it can mean many things. We can all speak it English. Can, it, it can, can mean, mean to kill somebody. It can. Exactly. And yes. precisely that is what happened at Kurosise's house, so at Yankuba Ture's house on that night. Sir, anyway. That is what the witness said he was told. So he was told something, correct? Sir, he was not told anything by myself. Right. Okay, uh, let, uh, let us move on. Uh, let us no, sir, there's, there, there's just one more point that I would like to make. Go ahead, please. Now, even if Yankuba was mad enough, which he is not, to allow such a thing to happen in his house, I would not have let him. How can you, or who would allow 
as something like this to happen within their house where your family resides. And according to uh, the testimony, it appears as if what Kanye is depicting happened in the corridor. How could... He did say it happened in the house. Yes, but he said as we entered. There is a corridor as you enter. He said as we entered the house. He did not say... But sir, it as you enter the, the house, you enter a corridor. Yes, but... But he did Sir, not say. We, I have been to the house before. He said, as we entered. So, as we entered the house, where? So he is allowed to be vague, and we are not allowed to challenge that. Nobody. Anyway, Mr. Sir, Sinata, here you are. You're challenging the evidence. I have given you. No, but you are time. now. You are interrupting me. I'm trying to explain, but, and you are telling me house corridor. It's, don't anyway. hide behind you. Are sir, I, no, no, no. But then, sir, allow me then, because we can, we will only exchange when I'm talking and you try to stop me. But, Mr. Singhati, let's get this straight. Let's organize this. Do you want me to ask questions, or do you not want me to ask questions? Sir, when I'm trying to put a point across okay. to save myself, allow me to save myself. I'll give I you have a given... Uh, okay, you see, again... I'll I'll I'm trying to talk and... Mr. Singhati, we have to give one another a chance. But I was talking and now you're trying to grab the floor back. You, it's either you, 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 you yes, allow me to talk I, or I don't. I am grabbing the floor back because I want to grant you your wish a second time on this particular issue. You can go back on all the points that you intend to make on this issue. And what I would want to do is to discuss each of those points and point to the evidence on each of those points. So have a second go at the cherry. So you want me to repeat everything that I have just said? I am giving you as much chance as you want. Okay, sir. Go ahead. Like I told you, the first point is that I do not know Kanye well enough to commit a capital offense with him. If you want, we can discuss that point and then move to the next. I think that is better. Okay, sir. Fine. You worked with Kanye on November 11th? No, I did not work with Kanye on November 11th. Uh, so Kanye was present at Yindum Barracks November 11th, correct? Correct. You were present at Yindum Barracks on November 11th, correct? Correct. You gave instructions that Fafa Nyang be executed, correct? Correct. And Fa Kanye was one of those who participated in getting Fafa Nyang out of the cells and pushing him to where he was executed. Like I told you, Kanye if was not part of our party. So no matter what you say, we did not work with him. If he volunteered himself to commit a heinous crime, that is up to him. Uh, you were the commanders, you were the superiors on the ground, correct? Correct. Can you wore a GNA uniform like you, correct? Correct. Can you couldn't have done anything without your, authority, without your authorization, correct? That is correct. So he worked under you, correct? He did not work directly under me. You were the number two commander on the ground, correct? That is correct, but and what I'm trying to say is that Kanye was not part of the group that went to quash the coup and therefore was not directly under my command. Mr. Mr. Singate, yes, sir. did it really matter that Kanye was not directly under your command? Yes, it, it matters because that is what you are trying to prove. You are now trying to prove that we actually work together, which is not correct. But isn't it obvious that you did? Isn't it obvious that you did? Sir, we did not work together. But you had command responsibility over all those troops who were at Jindum Barracks on that day. I did not have command over all the troops at Jindum Barracks that day. I did not. Well, the facts, the facts speak for themselves. The facts are, do not speak that language. You were Minister of Defense, Mr. Singate, correct? Yes. You were number two after Sana Sabali, correct? Yes. And soldiers implemented your orders on that day, correct? Yes, sir. And one of the orders that you gave was that Fafa Nyang be executed, correct? I never gave uh, Kanye an order to do anything. The question is one of yes, the orders. Yes, I did. I have did. answered that question, and but Kanye, it was not Kanye. And Kanye 
implemented that order, he was one of those who got Fafanyang out of the cell and marched him to where he was executed. But here is my point. Somebody who we suspected as being on the other side, now turning on his own people, how could I later on trust him to do something like no, this? That is besides the no, point. No, that is the let's, point. Let us stick to the point. We are still on November 11. You Sorry. try to suggest that you never worked with Kanye. I, I am establishing that on that fateful day, mm. Kanye implemented your orders. Let us clarify one thing. I was platoon commander in Alpha Company. I worked with the troops in Alpha Company, worked with them. Those are the ones you can say I worked with. I worked with my oddlies. I worked with those who, we, uh, who were assigned to me on that day of November 11th when we were leaving State House. Kanye was an isolated party that joined in the executions on his own volition. He, nobody ever told him, Kanye, go and do this. When we gave but orders... Kanye disputes that. Kanye said, you told him, Look, come, let's go and get rid of this That's fucking cunt and this No, but now you are jumping to this. I thought we were on November 11th. I am don't, No, but don't jump between and then allow, uh, uh, I mean, uh, if, uh, prevent me from jumping. No, if you calm down. No, I am calm, if sir. Take it easy. I am calm. All right, then allow me to learn. You would know that we're talking about the same thing. Okay, go November ahead. November 11th, the execution of EMCC. Kanye said, you grabbed him and said, let's go get rid of this fucking cunt. And the two of you. You and him, you executed EMCC and Bakari Kamara. That is not true. Well, I gave the order. How can you, Mr. Singhate, sit here and look at us, stare us, us in the face, in the eyes, and tell us that you did not work in it, Kanye, on November 11th? Sir, I did not work directly with Kanye on November 11th. Okay, you worked indirectly with Kanye on November 11th. <laughs> Sir, I gave an order... And Two can you execute please it? excuse me. And can you uh, please execute excuse it? me. Don't allow me. I thought you said you will allow me. Proceed. I gave an order to soldiers who were under my command. Soldiers that we went with to Yundum Barracks that day. <laughs> now, if somebody else jumps in, I never gave that person a direct order. Uh, Mr. Singhate, are yes. you seriously telling us that as Minister of Defense yes. and the number two person, Amongst all the AFPRC members that went to Union Barracks on that day. Actually, number three, not number two. Okay, be yes. it number three yes, or no, number no, four. Just for Do you want to tell us that you did not have superior responsibility over Alaji Kanye, who was a Rans Corporal in the Gambia National Army at the time? Let me tell you, or ex I, I thought you understood the hierarchy of the military. I understood. Uh, no, I don't think, I think, I think there's something that you need to know. The Minister of Defense today, the Minister of Defense today cannot go and command troops in the barracks. He cannot. A civilian Minister of Defense would not be able A military to do Minister of Defense, whether you are a general or a private soldier or whatever your rank is, you cannot go and command troops in the barracks. There is a hierarchy. I was in command of troops that were assigned to me for the purpose of quashing that uprising or that coup. So I did not directly, Kanye was not under me, he was not assigned to me. I gave an order for these uh, executions and Kanye jumped in and did whatever he wanted. True, he was not stopped. Can, may I ask a of question course, on that? Yes, sir. That by itself, wouldn't that amount to a crime? That Kanye by himself, unilaterally, without any order, just being the lone soldier, would go and kill somebody in the presence of the chairman, vice chairman of the AFPRC and the minister of defense of the AFPRC. Wouldn't that have amounted to a crime? Sir, remember, there is also testimony before this commission that Kanye did not shoot them as he had said. Uh, uh, I just answer my question. No, but did you Kanye shoot anybody at all? 
I believe he participated in the shootings. Okay. If he did so, yes, sir. without your orders, yes. he was a lone soldier who was trigger happy and unilaterally decided to go kill people on his own. Wouldn't that have amounted to a crime by itself? Yes, of course. As Minister of Defense, didn't yes. you have responsibility to, in, to ensure that Kanye was punished for being so trigger happy as to be committing such a crime of murder in your presence? What happened was that an order was given. It, it did not happen in the way you were insinuating. No. Because if I answer a yes or no, it insinuates that what you are saying is true and there is an explanation. As the, the explanation. As, as the evidence before this commission depicts, an order was given, these soldiers were shot. Kanye participated in doing so. Whether he, May I ask a question? Did you participate in making that decision? Which decision? The decision that these soldiers be executed. The ones at the, 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 the three at Yundum Barracks? Yes. Like we had said, the order was given, take no prisoners. We were told we kept prisoners. We went to State House. We were told to go back and finish the job. Sana Sabali had uh, led us back to Yundum Barracks, and I had given the order that we were supposed to execute from uh, up initial, from the beginning. And Kanye duly obliged. Kanye. Kanye was one of those who were suspected to have been part of the coup and he participated in the shooting. But Mr. Singate, I think I should bring this issue to an end. I should think so. Do you seriously want the commission to believe that you want to dissociate yourself from the killings that Kanye committed? Sir, I have already taken responsibility for all of those killings, but and I have done so more than once. What I am trying to dispute here is what you are trying to push on me, that I have worked with Kanye and therefore I know him. That is what you are trying to say. I am not talking about you no, knowing him. No, but no. I am talking about Obviously, if you, you work having with, worked with please, Kanye. Please, if you, if you have worked with somebody, naturally, you have to know them to an extent. There, there is no relationship that you can work with somebody and not know them to a certain extent. Uh, what I'm trying to establish is that point, I never worked with Kanye uh, uh, in that fashion. I never did. He was never under my command. He was never in my unit. I was in Alpha Company, he was in a different company, I think Bravo, and then he was made a regimental police officer. And the only thing that we had between us was, good morning sir, good afternoon sir. So I do not know the man enough to be able to commit a capital offense. What you are trying to say is that that short period of November 11th, that we worked with each other. And that is wrong. That is what I'm trying to put across. Thank you. I am putting across a completely different point. No, but, okay, go ahead. And the point I am putting across is that on November 11, you as commander, Kanye as a subordinate, you issued orders and Kanye implemented those orders in as serious crimes as this murder of their fellow soldiers. That is true, isn't it? He participated in it. He was not the only one who was there. It, precisely the point. Yes, sir. And uh, now we have cleared the fact that you and Kanye did participate in tandem together in an operation, November 11. And it was not just in one or two killings, but in several killings including in the forest, correct? Yes, sir, but that was under Sana Sabali's command. So don't, you know, try to make it seem as if Kanye went with me. 
Uh, Mr. Singhati. No, no, that's see, what you were trying you, you, to. Uh, back to this issue. No, you were trying to establish to... a nexus between myself and Kanye that does not exist. But a nexus exists already. All of you participated in that operation. How can you, in all sincerity, look at us in the face and tell us that you did not participate in an operation? I with did Kanye? not say. In fact, your question was not that did we participate in an operation. You asked whether I work with, you tried to point out that I had worked with Kanye. What I'm trying to say, in the normal course of my duty, I never worked with Kanye. I don't know so, him that so well. So that operation, it was not work. <coughs> November 11 operation, it was not work. That was not work in the normal course of our duty, sir. <coughs> oh, that is quite an interesting concession. That was not work. You in the normal course of our duties. And I like that. I like that phrase because it suggests that what you were doing was abnormal, it was not lawful, it was unofficial, it was not authorized. Sir, you can read whatever you want into that. But we all know that there was a coup, we went to quash it, there were not normal circumstances. And there was fighting and there were killings and we have taken responsibility for those things. What you are trying to do is try to paint to the whole world that I have worked with Kanye, and therefore working with, uh, 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 disputing the fact that I'm t trying to explain to you that I have not worked with him and don't know him well enough to commit such an offense. Uh, let me tell you what Kanye had to say at the end of his statement. Yes, sir, go ahead. This is what he said. After, after we had a, debrief, a debriefing at Edwards House in Cape Point, and in attendance were B.K. Jata, Pa Ali Gomez, Tumbul Tamba, Peter Sengate, Edward Sengate, and myself. And we agreed that we shall all bury what had transpired. I participated in the killing because at the time I dared not disobey orders from Edward or Peter Sengate. Well, sir, that is also extremely funny and doubtful. Uh, how would I, how would I trust somebody to keep a secret of what, uh, of, of, of uh, 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 the commission of such an offense when knowing that he turned on his own people in my presence? How would I tell him to keep a secret. The man has already betrayed and killed people in my presence. And then, I, all of a sudden, I trust him to commit a crime with him and then ask him to keep it a secret? Uh, the man suggests that you pretty much controlled him. <laughs> he could not disobey your orders. I control Kanye. Uh, Mr. Sinate, do you think that Kanye is mad enough to come to this commission and tell the whole world that I murdered the finance minister when he was not there at all? Only if you think that I am mad enough to commit an of such an offense with somebody that I hardly know, to take him and to ask him to do something without fully briefing him, without letting him know, to allow myself to be seen at a place where such a crime is being committed without being worried. Uh, if I am also mad enough to allow myself to be in Yankuba Ture's house, where it's a thoroughfare, people walk in and out and commit such an offense, because you can be seen at any moment. If I am mad enough, then maybe Kanye is also mad enough too. But I know I'm not mad. And therefore, then Kanye is not mad. Well, then there is something wrong. And that is why I said from the beginning, you should have done a proper investigation as to the link between myself and Kanye to establish well, whether we have, this is the We truth. have, Mr. Singate, and okay, Kanye, this is what Kanye had to say. I participated in the killing because at the time, I dared not disobey orders from Edward or Peter Sinate. He is saying that is the reason why he participated. He is saying it is you who sent for him. He is saying it is you who ordered that he goes to your house. He is saying it is you who told him that we are going to get rid of a cunt. He is saying it is you who took him to Yankuba's house. He is saying it is you who asked him to wait 
and to receive the minister when he, when he arrives, he is saying it is you who, amongst other things, struck at the minister when he arrived. Well, uh, anyway, there's one thing that I, I, I am baffles me. How would I know that Kanye is so petrified of me that he would only have to obey orders from me and cannot resist. How would I know that? Mr. Singata, you are changing. The no, I'm just telling you. He said that he could not uh, resist my orders. For, well, from me and Peter. How on earth would I know that Kanye, who is sitting in, where did he say, Blikama? That Kanye would, at my beck and call, would go and agree to, I mean, to do so. How would I know that? Kanye cap committed capital offenses in your presence, didn't he? Is he the only one? He's not just the only one. Just answer the question. Yes, Kanye he did. No, he did. capital offenses in he your did. presence. He did. You knew he had the propensity to do so. I knew he had the propensity to betray his own people. Uh, just answer my uh, question. No, but here yeah, I, I, I of course. Okay, Mr. Singate, uh, perhaps maybe you should ask your own questions and answer them. I can, my job here is to ask my questions, and you are required to answer my questions. Don't answer your own questions, otherwise this process, you will be making a mockery of this process, and no, that sir. is not helpful. You asked whether he had, that I knew that he had a propensity to kill people. I answered, I knew he had a propensity to betray his own people. But I did not, not ask. the question I asked. But but, sir, this is the important point. You see, you are trying to perhaps portray the fact that because he had killed before, that he could be used to kill again. I am trying to tell you that he did not only kill. He killed people that he, we suspected him to have been part of. And therefore, he is so manifestly unreliable that you cannot involve him or, uh, or, 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 or uh, um, uh, involve him in such uh, an offense if at all it was going to be co uh, committed. Uh, he would have been the last person. That is what I'm telling you. What kind he could, was not, he could not have been there. So, so okay. Yes, you telling us Kanye could not have been there. Yes. You're making us all believe that Kanye would come and confess to a murder that he did not commit. Well, sir, I believe that is exactly what he has done. Now, I can only give you what I know and what I would avoid and what I would not do. It is up to you to accept or believe that I am so bonkers and out of my mind that I'm so delusional that I would have done what Kanye has said. But no, Mr. Singate, in fact, what you are telling us is that Kanye is so delusional that he will come and look at us in the eyes and tell us, I committed a murder of which I know nothing about. I was not there. I had no business being there, but I committed the murder. That's what you want us to believe. Sir, you can believe what you want. I know what I know. Uh, let's listen to Alaji Kanye, what he had to say. Uh, kindly show us the end of his testimony before the TRRC. Uh, uh, means it was yourself, BK Jata, by Ali Gomez, Edward Sinato, and Peter Sinato. Just the five of Yes. Okay. And what happened there? And Edu said, okay. Uh, Ovi Van, this is uh, not the point I want. I want the tail end of Alaji Kanye's testimony. Mariama had already provided the stamp, time stamp. The, my involvement almost cost him there. I asked myself, what is this? It's like these people are using you as things. This is not what I expect. This is not why I joined the army. I joined the army to defend my country, but not to destroy the fellow government people. I know one of my brothers, my relative. Look at this. My first action is I came by my own relative. Same Jarakas. And we were in the execution. The one was involved. Who I, who I 
must have the same basic routine that is left in Bible. So, so, I told you in the inside. So, so, who can take now? Somebody who has been born. Who has been born. Who did not enter me. Who has put on me. Who has commissioned me. Who has forced me. To. To. I was. Like. I was working. Like often. A dead man working. I can call myself. I was even in the haze. What my time arose in December. Mr. Kanye said he was used as a tool. He dared not disobey you. And that is why he was used to commit this crime. Do you deny that? I can respond. Yes, please. Kanye has already told this whole commission, and you have played it again, that he killed somebody with whom he shared the same bowl with. I never knew that fact. I would never have been able to do that. He was not used as a tool during November 11th. He volunteered himself. Nobody forced him into the pickup to take those soldiers to the bush. So he cannot come here and say that he was used as a tool. Many soldiers were in Yundum barracks. They did not go. He jumped on the truck, and during his testimony, he never said that he was forced. He never said that he was ordered. And Sana Sabali never said that he ordered Kanye to go, and none of us ordered Kanye to go. So if he can, on his own volition, go and then partake in those executions, now come here and cry and say he was used as a tool, uh, sir, I think there's something fundamentally wrong with this. With this, with this testimony. Did Kanye sit in Yindum barracks and decide what was going to happen to all those, all those who were killed on November 11? No, sir. He was not part of that. Exactly. The decision to kill those who were captured on November 11 was made by yourself and members of the council, correct? Yes, sir. So Kanye did not just go around trigger happy and was sitting people, was he? Sir, let us go back to the evidence a little bit. Remember, the evidence before the commission which has been verified and accepted is that Sana Sabali led a convoy of all of us to Yundum barracks. The soldiers, the, the, uh, the prisoners were loaded on to uh, a Land Rover or a pickup and then taken to the forest. Those soldiers that accompanied us were the ones who actually uh, executed the order by firing the shots at those people. Kanye was never part of the group that came to Yundum. He was found at Yundum along with many other soldiers. But he decided to get on the vehicle anyway. But so whether it's, it's not about who took the decision. It is about somebody who decided to join who decided to join the vehicles and when uh, we got to the bush he partook in the shooting as uh, as per his own admission but does it really matter mr Singate? yes it does does it really matter that kanye volunteered does it really matter that kanye was forced the important thing is kanye is here saying that on this fateful night at the house of Yankuba Ture, you himself, your brother Peter Singate, Yankuba Ture, Paaliu Gomez, and uh, uh, BK Jata murdered Usman Kolosise. That is not true. But the people that I really feel sorry for are the others that he has mentioned. Is it uh, BK Jata and Paaliu Gomez? I don't know for whatever reason he has. But for the life of me, I cannot understand why he would go to such an extent. And we cannot understand why all these people would put you in the crime scene when you are not there. Well, I've explained. 
And Mr. Sinyate, uh, you see, throughout your testimony, we have seen this trend that every direct allegation of conduct against you, you have denied it. That is not correct, sir. Okay, you have denied participating, directly participating in the torture in Mile 2 prison. That is true. I uh, never did. Uh, you have denied being in Mile 2 when OJ was being tortured for an extended period. That is not true. I told you that I was there. I told you I was there for a short period, yes. Briefly. That's why I said for an extended period. It doesn't matter whether it is extended or short. I was there. I admit I was there. You denied being there for an extended period. Yes, sir, I do. Thank you. You also denied direct torture of the security detainees at Mile 2 prison, in particular Mama Cham. Yes, sir. You denied direct involvement in torture of Ibrahim Achongan. Yes, sir, I do. You denied uh, direct involvement in the torture of RSM Jeng. Yes, sir, I do. In fact, I flip the question. OJ alleged that you were present when they were being tortured. You were there for an extended period when they were being tortured at mile two. Is that a lie? Sir, let me put a context. I'm not going to answer a yes or no. Let us put ourselves in OJ's shoes. He, no, 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 please. No, no, sir, please. Really, I am on the hot seat. You have to allow me. You see, if OJ, if anyone was being tortured, you were being beaten, one second can seem like a minute. A minute can seem like an hour. You will lose time, uh, uh, all perspective of time. I do not blame Uncle OJ for believing that I was there for an extended period of time. I do not blame him for that. Okay. Thank you very much. But, but I was not there as far as uh, for an extended period of time. It was not true. Okay, good. And, uh, okay, the allegation by Mama Cham that you hit him I think we've covered that. I told you I deny that. Okay, let's go back and ask again and again, please. It yes, is sir. a lie. You will say that? Yes, sir, that is a lie. And the allegation that you also struck Ibrahim Machongan, you kicked him, is that also a lie? I never touched Chongan. It's a lie. It is a lie. You also allege that the allegation that you also hit Babu Karjeng at the back until his neck went cack, that is also a lie. Yes, sir, that is not true. Okay. And Abu Bakar Jeng told the commission that during the torture, you were the most brutal. Would that also be a lie? I don't, yes sir, because I don't know how Babuka Jeng can know who was more brutal from his cell. Uh -huh. He was not outside. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, Mafuji Sonko also told the commission that yourself and Sana Sabali were the most violent on November 11th. That too is a lie. I, it is. And uh, Abu Bakar Jeng, when he told the commission that you were the most brutal, that too is a lie. Sir, yes, it is a lie. And the killings at Fajara Barracks, Sena Sabali said you also shot. That is also a lie. Sir, I did not shoot. So that is a lie. Sir, yes, sir, it is, it is not true. Uh, and Sir Mendy also said that all of you who were there in this extended line, including yourself, fired their weapons. That too is a lie. Sir, Ensign Mendy could never have known who and who did not fire their weapons. That is not true. So that and is a lie. And he should not insinuate that. That is a lie. Uh, Abdullahi A. J. Dabo, Abdullahi J. Dabo also said that council members, including yourself, fired their weapons. That too is a lie. Yes, sir. And JCB Mendy also said that council members and their orderlies fired their weapons. That too is a lie. Yes, sir, that is incorrect. Okay, okay. but it's a lie nonetheless. Well, sir, if it is not correct, it is therefore a lie. I believe so, yes. Wonderful. 
and, and the killings at Union Barracks, although you took responsibility for ordering the shooting of three individuals, that is Fafanyang, uh, uh, Alaji Kanye said that you shot Basiru Kamara. That too is a lie. I never shot Basiru Kamara. Uh, you also participated with him in the shooting of EMCZ. That too is a lie. That is also a lie. I never shot my rifle at any of these three. Fafanyang, EMCZ, or Bakari Kamara. And the killings at the forest. Yes. In fact, uh, uh, before leaving Yindum Barracks, uh, Mumudu Marong, he said, you fetched wires to tie the hands of the victims who were taken to the forest and executed. That too is a lie. Sir, so that is not true. And uh, he also said that uh, uh, you re when you returned to the communications room, Saadi, Saadi Buhaydara said if, uh, that Jame had approved the killings of the detainees, and Edward said yes. That too is a lie. I cannot remember having that conversation with Marong. Then, then it's a lie. It's not true. Okay. And at the forest, Sanasabali said, you, Edward Singate, you fired your weapon. That too is a lie. Sanasabali is mistaken. I never fired my weapon at the forest. Okay. JCB Mendy said that you also fired your weapon. That is a lie. Yes, it is incorrect. And Alaji Kanye also said that you fired your weapon. That is a lie. Yes, sir. That is incorrect. Babukar Jata said the juntas were angry when one of the witness, one of the victims was praying, suggesting that it was against the Quran to kill them, and all of you shot at them. That too is a lie. That is not true. The shooting of Alaji Kebe. Sana Saab Alaji Kebe himself said you shot him. That is a lie. So I did not shoot Alaji Kebe. So that is a lie. Yes, sir. Sana Sabali said he was present, you shot Alaji Kebe, that too is a lie. Sana Sabali did not see the person who discharged his pistol. So that would be a lie. Oh, he, yes, sir. And Lamin Fati also said he was your oddly said he was present there, you shot Alaji Kebe, that too is a lie. That is incorrect, yes, sir. Okay, plotting to get rid of Sana Sabali. Dembanjai said at, that at State House, you, he heard you over telling Jab to telling Jame that, uh, sir, uh, let's do it. Mm. Jame said, let's wait until after the get there. That too is a lie. We would never discuss anything confidential in the presence of Dembanjai. It is not true. So that is a lie. Correct? That is yes, a lie. Yes, sir. Good. And he also said that you were so ambitious, wanting more power, and, uh, the, excuse me, Yes, you were so ambitious and wanted more power, that's why you participated in the purging of uh, Sana Sabali. That too is a lie. Dembanjai knows nothing of my ambition that is false, it is a lie. Uh, the, we have witnesses who said you escorted Sana Sabali to my two prison. Ibrahim Achongan said so he lied. Sir, I never escorted Sana Sabali to the prisons. Abu Bakar Jeng said so he lied. Sir, yes, sir, he did. Sirif Gomez said so, he lied. Sirif Go it would not have been the first time Sirif Gomez lied before the commission. He lied. Ma Mama Cham also said you escorted Sana Sabali to the prison. He also lied. Sir, I never escorted Sana to the prisons. It is not true. Ibrahim Makambi also said you escorted Sana there. Sir, he I lied. Did, I did not escort Sana. I didn't even know which cell he was placed in. Alaji Martin, who every witness said, escorted Sana Sabali to the prison, said he did so with you. Al Alaji Martin also I never lied. went to the prisons with Alaji Martin. Okay. All right. The PPP protesters. Yes, sir. No, that one you accepted responsibility. Uh, just a moment. The murder of Usman Kurosise. Yes, Lamin Fati said he dropped you at Yankuba's house. He too lied. He did not drop me on that day. That one I can assure you. He said he dropped you not on that, that day. That, not that day. That is not true. Not that day. So he lied. That, not that day. So he lied. Yes, sir. Lamin Marong said he dropped you at Yankuba Ture's house on that day. He too lied. Yes, sir. Ahmed Jangom said he saw you at Yankuba Ture's house that night. He too lied. The same Jangom who said he saw me smoking? Of yes. course he lied. Uh, Lamin Dur, 
also said he saw you at Yanku Bature's house at that night. He too lied? Not that night. That is inaccurate. It's not Al correct. Alaji Kanyi said he participated together with you in that murder. He too lied? Sir, Alaji Kanyi has lied through his teeth. Even the last part of the video that you played, he was misleading the commission and lying. Uh, Lamin Kababajo, with whom you served in Jame's cabinet, yes, sir. Showed, said there was no investigation. You said there was an investigation. Kazo Kababajo also lied? No, I believe that there was an investigation. The Secretary General and myself agreed that there would be an investigation, and he instructed the police. So Kaba, did he lie when he said there was no investigation? I am not aware of Kaba saying that. All I know is that I was told that there was an investigation. I am telling you that Kaba testified before the commission and he said that there was no investigation. He lied. Well, sir, Kaba was the Minister of Interior. I was not. He lied. Sir, I don't know what Kaba said. I didn't even hear his testimony. Must, well, I am telling you. <laughs> Mustafa Marong, former Attorney General, said he called you to tell you that there should be an investigation or to announce Koro's death, and you said no, it would not be announced until after a post-mortem. He lied. Sir, let me give context to that. No, be, be, no, because that one is not just a simple yes or no answer. What Marong tried to insinuate before the commission was that I refused to, uh, to make an announcement. And, but I would like to refer you to uh, Bajen Sise's own testimony, where she said that they were offered even a state funeral. They turned everything down from we were not talking about state funeral. No, we were no, 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 no. About it's, announcement. It was all part of everything. They did not want us to have anything to do with it. And therefore, if the family does not want the government to have anything to do with the funeral of their own family member, there is nothing that we can do. Uh, Bajen said they were not formally notified. You just came to the house and told them that. Formally notified of what? This offer for state funeral? No, they, uh, an offer was made. Of Koro's death, I meant to say. Of men, they were never informed of Koro's death. Of course they were informed. By who? The Secretary General had told me that they, the family had been informed that they were at the mortuary. The family denied it. Well, sir, I can only tell you what uh, I, I, I was told. So, Mr. Singate, what, what I try to do is to show that everywhere there is an allegation of your direct involvement. I, let me count. One, two, three, four. About 50 allegations by witnesses, all of them who claim to have been present and testified about the issues they testified, you claim that all of them lied. So first of all, that is a gross exaggeration. There are not 50 allegations. There are only the, the, uh, the, the allegations are few, but as you uh, have said, the witnesses on uh, some of the uh, issues are more than one. And that is why you and issues. why you ha and that is why you have counted to 50. So let us not try to give this perception that there are 50 allegations that I have denied. The allegations that I have denied are because I have not done them. I have accepted what I have done. What I have not done, counsel, I can never accept. No. It doesn't matter if the heavens fall. I would not accept what I have not done. Perhaps maybe if the heavens fall. We would not hear the whole truth from you, Mr. Singhata. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Mr. Chairman. I have no further questions. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair. uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I... Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 
No, I asked him a counsel if he finished him, uh, his questioning. Uh, yes, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, sir, please. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I have great respect for yourself and for all of the commissioners here, and even for counsel and his team. I have offered myself voluntarily, and I have done my best to give all of the information as accurately as I can as far as my recollection is concerned. But for counsel to suggest that I will not tell the truth to this commission, insinuating that I am lying is an insult. I didn't expect to be insulted when I came. And I would like you, sir, to please ask counsel to put his questions to me and I will do my best to answer everything and respectfully. But as I give my respect, can you please advise counsel to also give that respect in return? I did not come to be called a liar or for him to tell me that if the heavens fall, perhaps you would not tell the truth. Sir, I have told the truth as far as I know and as honestly as I can. And if that doesn't meet counsel's satisfaction, well, I'm sorry. If he has formed a preconceived mind against me, I cannot help him, sir. The only thing that I can do is to participate in the process, which is the truth and reconciliation. Truth, but also reconciliation. With counsel's language like this, it, it hinders the reconciliation and healing process. I can only appeal to you to ask him to please not address me in that manner. Thank you, sir. Well, Mr. Thank Chair, you. perhaps I would just wish to say um, a few words. If, yeah, if you can just uh, hold on uh, a second for uh, a right of reply. We will pass a bit later on. But I just want to um, uh, tell you that uh, the commission is a dignified body, and uh, we bring witnesses in here. Our rules and require us to, dig, uh, to treat you all with um, uh, dignity and respect. Council has been doing that, and uh, we might have um, uh, 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 put you in the hot seat as you referred to it yourself, given the position that you had, the um, responsibilities that you had for uh, the period that you were in government. Clearly, it's not going to be an easy um, uh, uh, experience for you here, just as it has been with um, the former vice president, told her the same thing, that she is going to be in the hot seat uh, given the responsibilities that she had um, uh, uh, during the period that she served as um, uh, vice president. My apologies um, uh, if you felt, uh, felt that uh, you were insulted, but uh, that is not what um, uh, our council has been doing, try to bring you here uh, and treat you with disrespect. No, that's, that, that, that's not something that we would be um, doing uh, in, uh, in, in this commission. Uh, we are after the truth. The truth, truth is not an easy thing to establish, uh, what ha given what happened here for 22 years. Uh, he has finished his um, questioning, and uh, counsel, if you have a brief um, uh, right of reply, uh, you should know that procedure. Uh, yes, I, I just want to... But it should be very brief, I just and we will just um, continue. I just wish to assure Mr. Singate that it is not my purpose to disrespect him or disrespect anybody. I have never done so. I just flipped the words that he used, and that's all I did. I used exactly the phrase he used, and I said that perhaps even if the heavens fall, as he suggested, we may not hear the whole truth. That is exactly what I said. And I am not insinuating for a moment that you are lying. All I am saying is that we, I have brought out about 50 issues, all of which point to direct all of which point to allegation of your direct involvement in an activity, all of which you said were lies. And I did that 
to just put in perspective the situation that we are faced in. Anytime there is a direct allegation of your direct involvement in something is a denial. This is exactly what I tried to establish. Thank you, Mr. Chair. But if you feel offended by my choice of words, I sincerely apologize. I do not, it's not my purpose to, inter to offend anybody. I don't do that. But I, all I merely did was to flip your words and tried to show in stark relief what we are faced with under the circumstances. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, my counsel. And uh, uh, Mr. Sinati, just to assure you that indeed we won't bring you here and put you in a very awkward man situation. I endorse this apology uh, uh, from, on behalf of the, the commission. One question I would ask you just before I turn to the commissioners, uh, the council is listed 50 allegations that were denied. You said these were inter allegations. There was um, uh, some uh, uh, exchange that you had with council. He had earlier in your testimony this afternoon referred to 11 executions. Now, I thought to me you cast that in the context of uh, overall responsibility. Well, can you tell me, of the 11, were there any uh, individuals who were directly killed by you at all during your service? No, sir, not directly, sir. But uh, for the three of them, I gave the order directly. For the others, so for the two at Fajara Barracks, I was there in the line when they were being shot. For the rest, in the, for the six in the forest, I was there. And I take full responsibility as if I pulled the trigger myself. I am not trying to uh, extricate myself in any way. Uh, just to put a little bit of perspective why I take responsibility. You see, sir, um, as an officer, I would line my sh uh, soldiers and ask them to shoot. I don't have to shoot myself, but I am culpable as if I pulled the trigger myself. And therefore, I take that responsibility. But as to having singled anybody out and shot them myself, no, sir, I did not do that. But I take the responsibility as if I did. Thank you. Thank you. I accept um, uh, the, uh, your acceptance of uh, collective responsibility. It was an individual thing that I was looking for. So throughout your service in the armed forces of the Gambia, you never shot or killed any individual. Is that correct? Shot, yes, sir. Killed, no, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioners, if you have any questions, please um, uh, do so. Commissioner Kinte, you have the floor, please. Mr. Sinade, um, you explained that uh, during the detention of the security officers, you went there to interrogate them. According to your explanation, your mission was to interrogate. But in the narratives, you said the moment Mohamed Cham was out, he was struck with a rifle butt and got fainted. Am I, am, I, am I right? Collapse, yes. He collapsed, meaning fainted. I think that's what repeated itself for the three people that you had confronted. Now, I, I would have loved you to say we went to torture than to interrogate. Because I cannot understand why or and how half dead people can be interrogated. Um, can you comment on that? Yes, sir. Uh, the intention was to go and ask them questions about other officers' involvement in the alleged plot that, uh, that they were accused of. However, upon our arrival, there was no asking of questions. So when I said when we, we went to in uh, interrogate, that was the intention.
but it did not turn out like that. What happened was very horrible and should not have happened. They were beat severely. That is what I can say. I was there and it was wrong, it should not have happened. So, and this is why I never said that we went to torture. If at all the intention was, or uh, the mission was to go and beat, I would have said, we, we, we went to beat them and we beat them. But this was why we never returned, because that in, uh, so-called uh, interrogation did not happen. And we realized that we don't have the tools or the capacity to interrogate. So uh, it was decided that we allow the NIA to conduct such interrogations on our behalf. Um, meaning, um, after the first one, the first one could have been spontaneous, surprising, and you couldn't have done anything. Did you make any effort to have made it stop at that one um, occasion so that it did not go three times and so on? Or you had no option but you had to sit and see it, the, the remaining two occur? No, sir, I would not say that. I could have or should have, I would say, should have at least perhaps told Sana that no, let us, let us stop this. But I did not. And for that, I deeply regret my inaction. Action and omission or failure to act is also an offense and I should not have not acted. And there have been several instances where definitely I have failed to act. And one was when counsel had rightly pointed out, even after Sana was arrested and a wrong narrative was, uh, was given, I didn't act. I didn't go back to Jambi and tell him, no, what you are saying is not true. I never did that. And I accept my responsibility and apologize. I'm not trying to run away from responsibility. That is why I'm trying to explain to what extent I feel culpable. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Singhater, yes, sir. Um, on the occasion of the 11th November, yes, sir. Um, of course, among the three who gave uh, Evidence. Yes, sir. One of them said, "Concord with you that you were interrogating yourself." Mm -hmm. Of course, the other two did not. Yes, sir. Well, to give you the benefit of the doubt yes, that sir. you were interrogating. Yes, sir. Huh? So that you, because it's two-two. Yes, sir. Now, as you were interrogating, facing the guy. Yes, sir. And you, you, you told us that you were threatening him. Yes, sir. Probably yes, because you wanted to generate some information. Yes, sir. Fine. But I think the proximity was so close. Yes, sir. That if um, someone else had fired other than yourself in a room situation, it wasn't dark because I think mm -hmm. there it was illuminated and yes, we were sir. seeing each other. Um, it sounds ridiculous that you cannot identify among the lot. There may not be many. If it is on the right, Maybe only four or five people are flanking. In fact, even if 10 of them are there, you know, it's unlikely that someone shoots from behind. It no, will be the front row, mm -hmm. which will likely measure one, two, three persons who could have possibly fired. And you were just interrogating. Yes, so that, sir. That proximity was so... Yes, sir. Is it that you are avoiding to implicate people or you don't want to tell the truth? Sir, uh, Kebe was under my control. Fine. And whatever happened to him was my responsibility. It was my fault. Right. And I take that responsibility as if I pulled the trigger myself. I was just trying to set the record straight. Uh, I could have easily said I shot him. But even if I did, uh, I believe the, the, the round penetrated his thigh perpendicular. <laughs> From my position, it would have come on the top or in his pelvis. You said that, I yes, understand, sir. yes. So, to be quite honest, there were lots of soldiers to the right and the, 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 the guard room was, uh, was full, but when the shot went off, obviously people went back, the room was a little bit cleared, it was not fully cleared, but it was completely my fault. First of all, he should not have been interrogated in that manner. It was wrong. Secondly, I should not have threatened to shoot him. Thirdly, 
he should not have been interrogated in such a confined space with soldiers who are angry and are capable of, of anything. As such, and knowing that all of these things are wrong, and him being under my control, I have nothing but to take full responsibility and apologize to Elijah Kebe. Um, yes, sir. Um, Mr. Simati, you started as an infantry. Yes, sir. You are one of the best shots yes, in sir. the army. Yes, sir. You are highly experienced with the weapon. Yes, sir. If a weapon fires in your presence, mm -hmm. you can tell which one of the three. Because it cannot be more than three. The possibility is three. Mm -hmm. Others are behind. They cannot pass a fire through people. That is true. You mean, uh, because sometimes, in fact, when you fire, when a weapon fires, some smoke, heat, flame, whatever, yeah, will come up. You mean you could not detect who among the lot fired Kelly? Uh, so to be quite honest, when you discharge a firearm uh, uh, during, uh, okay, uh, during the dark, you can see a muzzle flash. Definitely you can, but not during the light. And with the way they were and pistols being short, somebody can have a pistol and conceal it. So it was not a rifle. If it was a rifle, it would be very easy to uh, say, this one has a rifle, this one has a rifle, this one has, it must be between the three of them, or it must be this one. But with a pistol, it's a bit short. And to be quite honest, I was not concentrating on who was watching. I was concentrating on Kebe. Now, I guess we are only lucky that it went through his leg and nowhere else. Otherwise, we would have been talking about another murder. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Carr. You have the floor. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Mr. Singhati, I have a, my, my questions are basically going to focus on the transition period. Yes, sir. Um, I remember, was it on Thursday or Wednesday, the council asked you, um, told you that we had evidence that um, um, the Nigerians were in, well, there were accusations that they were involved in the coup. And you yes, said, sir. to the best of your ability, they were not. Yes, uh, but we've also with, um, had testimony that there were some politicians who were involved in the planning of the coup. Would you be able to confirm if that is true or not? Uh, so which coup, the July 22nd or the November? Yeah, the July 22nd. Sorry. No, sir, there was no civilian. Uh, part uh, uh, who uh, partook in the planning of July 22nd, 1994. It was a purely military affair. There was no civilian whatsoever. So, yes, the second question is on why was the, 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 the arrangement? Because from what we have from witnesses, it, you promised six months. Then it was extended uh, to two years. Why, why was the change? So first of all, we never promised six months. I heard uh, some testimony that we had a manifesto, we did not stick to the manifesto. No, sir, there was no manifesto. There was no plan. And this is why we set up the National Consultative Committee that went around the country to ask Gambians, what do you think of the takeover? How long do you think that they should be there? And what do you want from them? And it was their recommendations. And that committee was completely independent. It was their recommendations that we followed. I think there were a couple, I think there was one four years, there was one two years, but there was no six months. The six months that people are talking about was imposed by the donor community. They had told us that if you do not call elections within six months and hand over, then we will put you under sanctions. That was where the six months came from. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, the third question is, yes, sir. Um, from your CV, you've had experience or some relationship with all the three branches of government. At some yes, point, sir. you were a minister. Yes, sir. And you were a minister responsible for the legislature, yes, if sir. I am correct, and you, you served in the judiciary. Yes, sir. I want to understand whether the military mindset that you came into office was, was um, brought into the running of those institutions or not. At the beginning, uh, I must state that obviously we came with a military mindset. Uh, there was no experience. I was 25 years old. Jame was, I think the oldest was 38. 
so the only thing that we knew was how a military is run. Um, so definitely came, we, we came with that mindset. What we did bring at the beginning was the military discipline, which assisted us in ensuring that a lot of work was done, which led to a lot of developmental projects. Because if there was not that uh, uh, discipline, then there they would not have been all the development. Yes, yeah, I'm talking later, in, okay, the, later in, life. in the institutions generally. Was that military mindset changed, or was it changed to a more democratic um, um, system of government? I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking in terms of the mindset of how uh, the military is run and how civilian institutions are run. Uh, yes, sir, completely different. Um, uh, um, uh, for uh, an officer in the military going into a civilian setting, you're completely lost at the beginning. You don't understand uh, uh, the, uh, the civilians and the nature in which they do things. And you are used to do this, and they do, and yet in the civilian uh, setting, it is completely different. You have to be flexible, and you have to understand the people that you, uh, that you are working with, and you have to adopt a different style of management that will motivate civilians to work and deliver. So we, we were lucky that the senior civil servants under the general regime propped up our government during transition. If it was not for them, we would have been completely lost. It was their institutional memory. It was their experience and their willingness and dedication and patriotism that led them to guide us. We knew that a lot of them did not support the military, but they would not stand by and then see a mistake being made that would have a negative impact on this country without, uh, without talking. And for some of us, we learned a lot from these senior civil servants. So definitely, of course, the mindset was different. We had to change over time. But success came through learning and through the senior cadre and experience that we had in the civil service. Yes, the next question is, would you agree that all of you who planned the coup with Jamie eventually fell out with him? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Explain the reason why you fell out with Jamie. Uh, a number of things. Divide and rule. Um, if you are not corrupt and don't take, well, sorry, I, sh I think I should rephrase that. Because over the years, what we have seen is that he can take, but anyone else who takes, you face the music. But one, one, one major problem with Jame is that if he wants something done, you have to get it done, whether it is right or wrong. At the latter part, he stopped taking advice. He wanted everything to be done, the way, and no one person knows everything. You have to rely on your ministers, you have to rely on your civil servants, you have to rely on your experts. But you give advice that he doesn't like, and at the latter part, when I was a private lawyer, I found myself defending a lot of these people that used to serve in the civil service because they gave advice that he did not like. So uh, a lot of things, he, he made a lot of mistakes, there were so many things that went wrong. But if I'm given the opportunity to say a few words after your questions, uh, of course then I mean, I'll come to that. Thank you. Final Sorry, final question. Yeah. <laughs> final, final. You've mentioned um, that, uh, if I got you correctly, that is that Libyan money was coming to, to the government. Sorry? Also, you mentioned that the Libyan government was given the, the regime yes. funds. Yes. I want to understand the, the, how big was that and how helpful was that to the regime? And what were the other sources of funding for the uh, traditional government? Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Libya gave various amounts. Um, they gave uh, about $2 million, uh, which was used on rehabilitation of barracks. They gave about $5 million, which was used uh, to purchase granites. Uh, they gave intermittently various amounts. I, I, I cannot recall uh, everything uh, right now, but I, I believe the records are there. So, of course, uh, uh, the leader
the uh, Muammar Gaddafi was extremely helpful and welcoming. However, he has this, this, this ideology of expanding his revolution. And uh, he had ambitions of expanding uh, his revolution within West Africa, which, I mean, definitely uh, would have undermined democracy in neighboring countries. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Imam. Um, uh, um, um, yeah, you have the floor, please. Mr. Singate. Yes, sir. When you took over the reins of this country. Yes, sir. You said you are soldiers with a difference. Yes, sir. We have not seen what happened to the Gambian population, killing, maiming, imprisoning wrongfully, and doing all sorts of evil. Can you explain what actually changed your minds to adopt that type of attitude against a free population? Thank you. Yes, sir. The the main uh, um, issues that have been raised, especially before the Commission, uh, especially with the arrest and detention of the protesters, uh, the uh, beatings and arrest and beatings of the UDP supporters, uh, the, uh, the killings uh, in the barracks. Um, I I don't want to offer an excuse. I don't want to be seen to be insensitive to the victims, the families, uh, and their loved ones. The only thing that I can say is that even though at the time we felt that what we were doing was right, we were young, we thought that, okay, uh, they are protesters uh, they are protesting against the military government before foreign embassies. They should be arrested. It's unlawful. Uh, their subsequent uh, detention and uh, beatings, completely wrong. There is, there is no excuse for that. Um, but it would not have happened if at all there was no protest. It's not like people were just taken from the population at random. But even though I'm not trying to offer any excuse, I'm saying it was wrong. With regards to uh, November 11th, you see, um, what we did when we actually got wind of the coup was go and beg them not to launch. Now, th there's no military government in this world that will know that there are people who are going to launch a coup against them, and they go and beg the plotters not to launch. So when they launched, that anger, and especially upon realizing that the plans were to kill us and kill our families, led us to go overboard. Now, like I said, it doesn't matter what the status quo was. What happened was wrong, it should not have happened, and it will not happen again, inshallah. Uh, with regards to the uh, the UDP uh, supporters uh, at the bridge. Um, I don't know exactly what prompted the fight and the beatings uh, by the soldiers, but it was wrong. I was there. I didn't stop it. I didn't intervene. And uh, as a result, some people were beaten. I, I believe what I should have done is order them to stop. But I did not. Uh, but it was not like people were randomly taken from the population and then uh, killed or, 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 or beaten like that. I hope that answers your question. Yes, sir. The second question is, Yes, sir. you are given instructions to go and bring no prisoners. Yes, sir. You are all well-trained officers. Yes, sir. And you know the rules of the game. Yes, sir. How is it that you simply accepted that order and opened fire on your own brothers, killing many of them? How many of your soldiers were killed? That's what I want to Yes, sir. None of my soldiers were killed. We were shot at, but none of our soldiers were killed. Especially in Fajara Barracks, the first fire that we took was from the story building 
around uh, where the, lands, uh, the, the junior NCO's residences were. Those bullets were uh, hitting the sand around our boots. If it had been a little bit higher, <laughs> then there would have been a catastrophe. The second major encounter that we had was there were soldiers hiding inside the old mosque, and they were shooting at us. We, we returned fire, <coughs> suppressed them, but we captured them. We did not kill them. It's not that we just executed the order uh, like that. There were some prisoners taken, and we were told to go back and then finish what uh, we uh, had been asked to do to begin with. Why didn't you know, now that you have captured these prisoners, why did you accept to still go and kill them? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, the, the, there is no excuse, even though the arguments were right. But number one, if they had succeeded, we would not have been alive. Number two, uh, along with our families, number two, if uh, they remain and they are in prison somewhere, we do not know to what extent they have sympathizers in the army. And they had sympathizers. What would happen if they got up one day and then freed them and then they launched another coup? There would be further bloodshed. But having said that, yeah, Imam, what happened was wrong. And I apologize for my part and I apologize for all of those who were under me, and I apologize those who were directly under me and those who were not directly under me. I take responsibility. It was wrong. Yes. Thank you. Um, Imam C, you have the floor, please. Thank you, We thank you for coming. And the apology that you have made to the entire Gambia. Wow. What you have said about the council? You did not uh, believe that uh, you would make this sort of statements if you came here. You thought that when you came, you'd say something else, which will not be denial. Secondly, there are witnesses that he has named here that uh, named you. And uh, they have not, they have not seen each other. Uh, each one came on their own day and made their statements. But you said that all of those, uh, what they said is uh, lies. I do not know what you will say to them. Are you also apologizing to them or what? Well, uh, yeah, Imam. Uh, Imam? No matter how I be, so I say my name. The reason for coming? For Balal Nini Aha. You are toying? At no more toying, you buy Kepoko Hamne Amne meet it. She walked to Bunga Hamne Mang for one. Anyone that uh, has any pain uh, during the course of my presence there? Mangla Jegul. I apologize to you. It did not please me the manner in which he asked me that question because the way I answered him, those that were saying those things, if they should hear it, uh, they would be disheartened. The fight that existed from the beginning will continue, and there will be no reconciliation. That was why the question he asked me was not pleasing to me, but I have to answer him because that is the uh, work of the commission. Uh, uh, I know that. Uh, the time that we were there, we had uh, hurt many people. The commission be to hawal pour new new And this commission, the reason for its establishment to establish the truth, and to try to reconcile so that uh, our nation can move forward.
that is the reason why I came. And I also apologize to all that have been named here that I have said that all that they said here was not the truth. And and, and, and what I have said here, because uh, speaking is not easy, if what I have said hurt anybody here in the commission or elsewhere, and the reason why I came is for us to reconcile. I apologize and I beg people to pardon me. The second question is wow. each one that comes here says that at the time I was young. When you took over the country, we heard you say that it will only be for six months. Because you were young. After that, you will return back the government to civilians so that uh, they will uh, run it. Because uh, a young person does not have the wisdom, does not have the means. But there's something that Sana said here. He said the day you had a meeting, so that uh, when he said the six months time was due, you should leave. He said that was the last time he had peace from you and Yaya Jame. That was when you said to him, let them leave all the uh, weapons. Because civilians uh, do not uh, are afraid of guns. And he did not know that that was all part of the means that we have been uh, uh, deployed against him. You know what happened to Sanasabali is not or was not proper. It shouldn't have happened. I do know that when we came we did not even know who was to man what position. Which was why during the first and second days there was a misunderstanding. When we chose the members of the council, that was when order reigned. Government the minister civilians form government. The government we established chose ministers to come and uh, form the government. But to be frank to God, at that time, we did not talk about six months. You don't walk during anywhere. My donor community, manam, deka yunga hamne, nyonyere joch nimbal. Nyon nyom nyom nyone, nguri solda din kumuna tole six months. Ko hello 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 na, why six months la nyu apple? After lulu na nyu auto election. The pre-civilian government you talk. The people that talked about the six months we are a donor community. They said that since what has happened has already happened, they can only tolerate a military government for six months, after which elections were to be called and the government handed over to civilian rule. National Consultative Committee, NCC. After that, we established what was called the National Consultative Committee, the NCC. Delegates were sent across the country to sound the opinions of the people about uh, the takeover of the government and the government that they want to, to come out of it. To ask them how many months or how many years do you want the military to be in government? To put it short, that was where the two-year term came about. The second question is, he said you shot him. You want to know whether you shot him or not? Imam, I did not shoot him. 
my my child responsibility be? but i took the responsibility condition bumne kon binko fetel uh, the condition in which he was shot sismo lo hola ne kon mate man ma ko don traiti ne dinala shoot he was under my control and i was the one threatening to shoot him why man kena ameu mo on ganai but i was not the only one who had a gun so la ri angi mer guard room bi mo ngi fess the soldiers were angry and the guard room was full nyun ko wur he was been surrounded no 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 len ko fetele that was how he got shot la ci on ko ko fetel did you ask him who shot him wallahi la kewma to god i did not ask luñ def moy ñu wan gi seene mu ngi na ca what we did was when we saw that he was bleeding len ko yobu ci clinic bi after ñu evacuate ko we took him to the clinic and later evacuated him so mu jëlu la ci moy my last question is ngeen duggé té house when you got into the state house jawara jawara mi sen takay ak sen bagage yo jawara his wives all their belongings parce que jawara mom té house rek la dekkol fofu rek la dekkol because jawara he had resided in the state house that was the only place he lived in ndak woon ngeen mokam yi ngeen delo len ko wala ñom jotone nañu sen bagage bi did you call his relatives to hand over their possessions or did you give them back to them well sen ci luma ham by what i know dañ len o ñu ñew ciel sen bagasi sen yere sen yep lu nek ci chef yep te lolu video nañ ko they called them to take their possessions their everything and all of that was recorded in tape video bi they defa record lu ñel yep the video recorded everything that they took deguma ne dara manke na fa de i did not hear of anything being missing there why su fekke ne dara manke na fa tamit but if anything was missing dañ len ko ra fay then they should be repaid dara woru to na manke nothing should have been missing moy aleli pa bi ci bopam beat the old dad's possessions ak njaboti yep and all his relatives yep ñu fa dekko family and all that those that lived there all of them should have had access to their possessions su fekke ne jotuñ ko tamit if i told they did not have access to their possessions ah kon lolu de mom lu ñaawla be pare woro to na am then that is something that is uh, unfortunate and something that should not have happened xar yi ngeen yi ngeen do rey fofu mom the sheep that you were uh, slaughtering there ci jëm ben wër yi ngeen tok Uh, in the six months that you, yeah, you were there we tam nako ngeen ko amé how did you get to have those har uh she ma dégué né yalla munu ma fatélu ko har yi dé to be i cannot recall those she har nané xam nané yaay jamé ko buganda wala xam nané do know that yaay jamé is someone that uh, loves meat sutoge dina santane ñu real ko bey wala ñu real ko xar if you say la xay wala give order for a ship or a goat to be slaughtered for him uh lu la ko xamale de that is what i know him of te lu ngena buga moy la xass bi and uh, what he knows <laughs> is the rule <laughs> why uh ci ñu lifim pour lifim mu mu serious uh, uh har hejna after 6 months lolu lolu reigning why hejna do time bobu nonu rek mom every time so american i think maybe after the 6 months har den ko de real bay ñu la ka yaaka bi ay yaakar nane xaliss bobu nonu ci posam la de joge lolu la belief i think how sick after the 6 months uh, there were some slaughtering but i i i, I do know that of uh, uh, this after that too he used to order once in a while for a uh, sheep or goat to be slaughtered for him but i think this used to come from his own personal uh, finances thank you very much um, uh, commissioner sambi you have the floor thank you very much chairman um singate ntem na ñi men ñi garo ki lan singate the question i want to ask you I want to ask you in the Mandinka language. So that my fellow Mandinkas get to hear it. Since we started the sittings up till now. All the killings that have been talked about here. Who ever got killed we know who killed who. Marcoro sisela xaya but Corosis's death 
I see that everyone is trying to extricate themselves from responsibility. There is no one single person who can say that I am the one who killed Kurosise. That is something that is surprising me a lot. If these natives got to hear that these other people are the ones that killed him, but Koro's family here is sitting, the whole world is watching, and they cannot know for certain who killed their relative. <laughs> So left alone, at least I am all Marco Pun audience only alone in the Kerim because me, I just so we want to, to know so that the audience know what is happening. All these ones that got killed, they know who killed their relatives. You're coming here. It pleased everyone. It pleased all Gambians. We thought that those who were uh, served here as witnesses, just as the lead council told you, something that was about 10, uh, 50 cases, and all these people said that you were present in all of those incidents, incidents and you have not accepted being present in any of those incidents. And the whole Gambia was hoping that when you come, you will make everything clear. I think the slogan that is here, the truth will set you free. So Gambia beba expect kanko sana sabali menke nita fana nata ebe wole kela. So the whole Gambia was expecting that what sana sabali did when you came, you too we are going to do something of that nature. Moi be mira la koni be gila na ayo paro la ite na ji kulu eh ite na ji kulu me alon koi ka jibo kan. People were expecting that you came through an airplane, but you you ended up coming through a canoe. That is something that is surprising me a lot. Honorable Commissioner, near Ajay Wanyama. Honorable Commissioner, if you view things in that light, in a right lam, it would be within your rights. But in a man long. But what I know was what I said, and this is between me and God. Well, to also just come and say things which are not true, just uh, to please people, it has no use. And no matter how long it takes, people will eventually get to know that what this guy said was not the truth. All of us are in the Gambia here. Nothing is hidden here. And I believe that those people whose issues have been said here, truth must reveal itself. But before then, we must allow patience and develop patience for one another. The pain is too much. The pain was well overboard. But let's speak the truth. It is better than to fool each other. And I believe that the investigation of the attack the manner in which this investigation is proceeding, certain things will also come out. Which may point us to other areas where we never intel, expected to. What I said, if at all it did not satisfy people, please I beg for your understanding. I did not come to hide myself or to shield myself from anything. I brought myself. 
I think that in itself is an example. Wato mbebe alalebu. Then we are all under the control of God. And no matter how long it takes, whatever we are seeking, it will come. Let's uh, forgive one another and uh, give. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Um, Mr. Singati, if you have any closing remarks, please proceed to make them now. Yes, sir. Uh, follow, follow. Okay, but follow. Uh, sorry, closing remarks. Um, I would like to apologize. I thought normally you would ask for my thoughts on something maybe I don't know, or should I just say everything at the same time? Okay. Right. Follow, follow. First of all, I want to beg forgiveness for my family. My family is wide. You are our the four corners of the URR. Lamin Koto Pasimas. Lamin Koto Pasimas. Koina Fo Sareboyo. From Koina to Sareboyo. Itata Sate O Sate Binam Barim Sotalaje. Any village you go to will meet my sister's body there. Wala Minki. Oh, my aunts. Wala Ntula Jula Kundankul. Oh, my family. The Jula Kunda, members of my family. Katuya long sutu sero hulu itulia miraku ni jula muso futu ila hadjo kafirine. Because especially sero hulu who think that if you marry a, a jula woman, you 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 are always more blessed in terms of your business. Ka finti U R R. Man okay. Man sa unguli for the kunda mbota damen to bari ka 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 banko be fanandani yamfola. I, am, I did not jump fully where I am from, but I am pleading to the entire nation for forgiveness. Follow, follow, Mboy Temenul Kanne. First of all, on those that I hurt. Mboy Temenul Kan. Those that I did not uh, Bari, hurt. Bari Mel Besiring Ibe Niminaring. But those that are sitting down and are experiencing pain. Beyam for Daniel Awol Mboy asking for forgiveness from all of all people. Amanke ko ngamenke directly dam mati de. It's not for those things that I did directly only. But if any man menke, but even those that I did not do, mimbe chentele ngasindi. The one that is there, I was the one who put him there. What o na e ku ku ke me alonko a e modo dimi. So whatever he did, which caused hurt to anyone. Until I share for my share, my own share is also there. Allah man tanka langa dun na kabro kono mulman yamfanya. God forbid that I should go to my grave and not still get the forgiveness of the people. Ma jealousy, wall of tamit. Let me move on to the wall of language. Jegaluna generally si smala kabisose. I sought forgiveness generally in my language, Mandinga. My family, those that I hurt and those that I did not hurt, all of them. Why, my guess to see victims in particular. But I also want to look at the victims in particular. I cannot name them, all of them. And uh, that is not uh, good. If I had what uh, pleased me, not even one person would have been bruised. Why down as my year I'm trop being a hamne list of victims is a defa very being a hamnesa do mamuna trophy the was sent to Lulu. Defa defa dow yaram de pari. It's so sympathetic that the list of the victims is so uh, long that I cannot even name them. And I don't even have the words to express how I feel right now. Because the pain that I, I caused to people, there is nothing I can do to 
take that away from them, they will have to live with these pains for the rest of their lives. Some have lost their sons. Some have lost their husbands. Some have lost their fathers. Some have lost their wives. Some have lost their friends and their loved ones. And all of that, so if you should look at it, it was not necessary in the first place. And this is the most pathetic part of it. So for my part, I am pleading to everyone that victim latte that was a victim and my fault not directly it was as a result of uh, my fault my direct fault in jagam mangen set siala set you in tv to forgive me for the sake of god and the sake of the prophet in jagam and forgive me those that were under me also kepako hamne Anyone that troubled you, I seek forgiveness. And I take the responsibility personally because there are no bad soldiers, there are only bad officers. Because the Westerners say there are no bad soldiers, there are only bad officers. And that is something that I accept today. Bullen said, NIA, my police, my immigration, my soldier, any security force, don't look at the NIA, the police, the army, or any security force that uh, operated based on our command, whether they knew it or otherwise. And it happened that they violated certain people. I take that responsibility and I seek your forgiveness for that. So if you see uh, the reason why I say this, if not for the July 22nd, 1994, all of this wouldn't have happened to them. I know all of this also is the predestined will of God. Why? But God also has endowed, with, endowed us with the wisdom to be able to distinguish between right and wrong. What is the way and what is not the way? The Hamnane Commission be. And I know that what we have heard here at the Commission that is the way. Finally, Finally, I pray to God. And Commissioner, si yana le yala me dole bi akatan bi punge jekeli sendi gini. And you, the commissioners, may God give you the strength and the wherewithal to be able to accomplish your tasks. Prepare yala mailen. And also for God, for God to give you the strength and the wisdom to be able to make things straight in the country. I am praying to God so that God will establish peace and, and solidify peace in this country. And those that are seated with their pains and their heart, so that God will take away that heart and replace it with uh, happiness. So that God will also uh, give them the heart to be able to forgive. I thank you all. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Mr. Sinate, uh, from time to time we like to remind uh, witnesses who appear here, both victims and the perpetrators, as well as the general public, uh, the objectives of this commission. We would say also 
that the Commission is neither a court of law nor a witch hunt. It was established primarily, as it says in Section 13 of the Act that established the Commission, to create an impartial record of some uh, human rights violations that occurred in this country between July 1994 and uh, January 2017 for essentially four purposes. To promote healing and reconciliation, to respond to the needs of uh, the victims, to address some uh, impunity, and uh, to prevent a repeat of these violations and uh, abuses. We bring witnesses here to come and assist us in uh, creating that impartial record. This is what you have done. We thank you enormously uh, to come here from your base in Abuja, Nigeria, to come and assist us in creating this record. Thank you again for your testimony, and thank you for taking the time to come and uh, assist the Commission. We will meet again tomorrow morning at uh, 10 o'clock sharp. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Tomorrow I will sleep the whole <laughs> You can't. <laughs> but by the time I get home, it will be after nine. By the time I say my prayer.